How's it going everybody? My cup of tea here, back in the reaction video, and it's time to continue watching the Journey to the West series. Yay, yay. Now, we watched the first episode from Overly Sarcastic Projection, I think two weeks ago, and now we're here to continue the journey. <laughs> journey, see what I did there. Last episode, we saw how Son Wukong was just overpowering everybody except for Buddha, and now he's been trapped under this, I think it was like a mountain that Buddha summoned for like, like hundreds of years or whatnot. And yeah, we're about to see what happens in this next episode, or this part, or part two, I guess we can call it. So let's get right into it. Also, I had watched the Game Awards last week, and they finally showed a release date for Black Myth Wukong that's coming out next year. I think it's August 20th or 22nd. Um, so I'm looking, I'm excited for that game, and hopefully, like, maybe if I watch this entire series, I can, like, catch some references from that game. That's, that's the goal, that's not really the goal, but that's what I'm hoping what happens. Like, oh, shoot, I remember this person from the Journey to the West series I watched. That's why I hope it happens when I get the game. But without talking, let's start this. Let's get it. Last time on the journey oh, to the West. Dragon Ball recap. The Monkey King Sun Wukong, after achieving immortality six ways from Sunday, was brought down by the forces of heaven and placed inside Lao Tzu's brazier of the eight trigrams to be rendered down. Did I have catch on the next time? I don't know if However, I did or not. Our hero proved too Pretty powerful fine. for this scheme and broke free, making even more havoc in heaven. But his reign of terror was abruptly ended when he was imprisoned oh, by the heavenly Buddha beneath right, the we'll fire phases. No catch, no catch. He must now wait for a chosen someone to come yeah. set him free. So Buddha returns to his home, oh, okay. the monastery, where he spends a relaxing five years writing up three baskets of scripture. Now, these three scriptures are apparently so powerful that they are capable of redeeming even the most sinful of sinners. Well, oh. sounds fishy to me, but hey, I'm not the guy <laughs> with the universe in the palm of his hand. So these amazeball scriptures need to be delivered to the land of the East in order to spread Buddhism to the sinful folk who live there. But there's okay. just one problem. For some reason, Buddha can't deliver them himself. So they need to find someone in the That's land weird. of the East who can make the journey to the Western heaven to pick up the scriptures and then return with them. Our friend the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin volunteers to find such a person, and after receiving five magical artifacts to give to the scripture pilgrim, she goes off eastward to find someone worthy of making the journey to the west. Mm -hmm. So Kuan Yin and his disciple Moksha head out along the route the scripture pilgrim will have to take as a way to test the waters and make sure the guy can make it through in the first place. Their first encounter with a murderous river spirit three minutes out from the Thunderclap Monastery is not exactly encouraging. But Kuan Yin persuades <laughs> the guy to chill out and wait for the pilgrim and then to join and aid him on his quest with the added bonus that he'll be redeemed for the crime that got him exiled to the river in the first place. He accepts the okay. offer and is given the name Sha Wu Ching or Sandy for short. Don't ask me how Sandy is short for Sha Wu Ching. So Kuan we'll Yin and Moksha Sandy. continue on their merry way whereupon they encounter a pig demon wielding a huge rake. He and Moksha fight for a little bit until he notices okay. Kuan Yin and immediately stops the fight in favor of asking her for forgiveness because he's made something of a habit of eating people who come along the road. You That's know, because he's a demon. Kuan Yin again suggests that he join the pilgrim sense, too when he comes along this way and thus be forgiven for the whole eating people thing. And okay. the pig agrees. And Kuan Yin is putting this pilgrim in pretty questionable company. <laughs> Kuan Yin gives him the name Chu Wu Neng, Pigsy for short, and heads off, leaving Wu Neng to remain strictly vegetarian until the pilgrim arrives. So they continue onward <laughs> when, surprise, they encounter yet another charming individual who could potentially help our as yet nebulous pilgrim. Can you tell that this story is the origin of a lot of anime tropes? In this case, our colorful character is a young ah. dragon who accidentally set fire to his dad's palace a little and oh. his transgression against fire safety has been sentenced to death by the Jade Emperor. Dang. Kuan Yin persuades the Emperor to pardon the young dragon and then she directs him to a nearby river where she instructs him to turn into a white horse when the pilgrim passes by to help him reach his destination. Anyway, they continue on okay. only to encounter an unexpectedly luminous uh, mountain, the mountain. The mountain of five phases and with <laughs> it the imprisoned monkey Help king. Me. So Wu Kong okay. Kuan Yin, how's it going, girl? Great to see you. It's been really lonely for the past 500 years. You Dang. know, nobody ever comes by to visit. And Kuan Yin's like, yeah, that's great. Listen, I'm about <laughs> to go find someone to make a pilgrimage for me. He'll be coming by soonish. He's going to release you from this mountain, and then you need to help him get where he's going. You got that? And Wu Kong's like, 10 4, good buddy. Yep, that's not going to happen. Just all about that virtuous mission. So Kuan Yin and Moksha arrive in the city of Chang An and disguise themselves so as not to attract too much attention. <laughs> and it's about seen. finding the right monk to serve as the protagonist of this little adventure. Speaking of protagonist, here's where the book veers off into a tangent to describe the ludicrously convoluted family history of this dude, Xuanzang, who, okay. in case you hadn't already guessed, is our soon-to-be protagonist. Now, Xuanzang has one of the most complicated family histories in all of epic protagonism. I won't recount the whole thing here, because that would take all day, but basically, he's the grandson of an emperor, he's been raised as a monk his whole life after being moses by his mother, and he's the reincarnation Bang. of Golden Cicada, an original what? disciple of the Buddha and a holy being. So Xuanzang is basically the best guy ever, and a total sweetheart. Keda, oh, emperor, he's yeah, been a great protagonist. Right. I won't recount the whole thing here, because that would take all day, but basically, he's the grandson of an emperor, he's been Grand raised as a monk his okay. whole life after being Moses by his mother.
I couldn't pause if it was a grandson of an emperor. Got All it. Day. But basically, he's the grandson of an emperor. He's been raised a as a monk his whole life after being Moses by his mother, and he's the reincarnation of Golden Cicada, an original right, disciple cool. of the Buddha and a holy being. So Xuanzang is basically the best guy ever, and a total sweetheart, despite the wacky circumstances of his birth. So long story <laughs> short, three court officials convene to select a worthy monk for reasons completely unrelated to Kuan Yin's mission, and of course they select Xuanzang, the biggest boy scout in all of ancient China. Okay, anyway, okay. Kuan Yin catches wind of this and goes to see if he's worthy of being the scripture pilgrim. She finds her way to the court officials and gives them two of the various gifts the Buddha had given her to give to the pilgrim so that they might give them to the most virtuous monk they know. So Xuanzang <laughs> gets a beautiful robe and a priestly staff, both courtesy right, of Kuan right. Yin, and Kuan Yin learns that Xuanzang is the best man for the job. So the Grand Mass, which is the thing that they selected Xuanzang for, happens, wherein Xuanzang has to present a memorial to the Tang Emperor. Kuan Yin takes the opportunity to steal the show by revealing herself in all her glory to the court, and officially <laughs> requests a volunteer from the audience to go on the pilgrimage to go to the Western Heaven and retrieve the Tripitaka, which is the official name for the thing the Buddha made. What's happening? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so, yeah, he chose uh, the main character. I already forgot his name. Uh, I need ah, names. Kuan Yin takes the opportunity to steal the show her. by revealing herself in all her glory to the court and officially requests to volunteer from the audience to go on the pilgrimage to go to the Western Heaven and retrieve the Tripitaka, which is the official name for yeah. the thing the Buddha made. Xuanzang obviously volunteers, just as planned. And yeah, okay, yeah, because they were in disguise. She was in disguise, so they didn't know that she was actually like someone that the... Was it Jade Emperor? No, Buddha. Somebody. I, yeah, I get it. We get Xuanzang it. is given the by name Tripitaka and sent on the thing the Buddha made. Xuanzang obviously Xuanzang, volunteers, right. just as planned. And oh, Xuanzang swing. is given the by name Tripitaka Xuanzang? and sent on his merry way with a horse and two attendants to help him. Don't get too attached to them, though, as the party is oh, captured okay. by demons almost Dang. immediately and Tripitaka's <laughs> two attendants are killed and eaten. Great oh, start. So the demons oh finish their attendant buffet and bunker down for the night, leaving poor Tripitaka to ponder his exciting future as lunch meat. When this suddenly a mysterious minutes. old man appears out of nowhere and frees him, and Tripitaka is like, Where the heck did you come from? And the old man's like, Don't ask stupid questions. Here's your horse. So Tripitaka and the, old man's about the horse is the dragon, right? That uh, she mentioned, like, hey, turn to a dragon once you get, once the Either the pilgrim or the traveler comes by. Out of the cave, and Tripitaka goes to thank him, only to find that he's vanished, leaving a note explaining that he was the gold star of Venus himself, providing a helpful bit of divine intervention. So Tripitaka goes on by himself Tripitaka, for about okay. half a day, only to discover that he really doesn't have the constitution for all this questing nonsense, and he and his <laughs> horse are just about done with everything, when who should come to the rescue but a friendly, boisterous hunter named Po Chin, who spooks all the beasties that were harassing Tripitaka and offers to guide him to his home. So Po Chin and his family have Tripitaka over for dinner, which is slightly awkward because Tripitaka is extremely vegetarian and Po Chin's mm. family hunts all their food, but they handle it gracefully and Tripitaka further endears himself oh, to the family and he you. accidentally pacifies the ghost of Po Chin's father, like you do, oh. which prompts Po Chin to offer to guide Tripitaka to the mountain on the border of the Tang Empire to ensure no further hijinks ensue. Did somebody say hijinks? Uh -oh. So as it turns out, the uh -oh. mountain... <laughs> it's, it's the it's the boy! And they get to none other than Five Phases Mountain, where our good buddy Sun Wukong is still languishing. So Wukong's like, yo, kid, are you that pilgrim guy? Kuan Yin said you'd be coming by to let me out! And Tripitaka's like, awesome. How do I do that? That mountain looks kind of heavy. And Wukong's <laughs> like, you just gotta climb to the top and peel off the golden seal. Time to the top of the mountain, all right. So Tripitaka manages to get the seal off the mountain, and after he backs off to the minimum safe distance, Wukong breaks the mountain in half and zips on over. So Tripitaka and Sun Wukong continue westward together, but they've hardly gone ten feet down the road when suddenly they're beset by bandits. So Wukong's like, don't worry, master, I know exactly what to do in this situation. Beat all and up. proceeds to kill all the bandits with his trusty oh, stick thing. Kill. So Tripitaka's okay. like, son, we don't kill people. And Wukong's like, I think you mean you don't kill people. Dang. And Tripitaka's like, no, no, you're Buddhist now, Buddhists do not kill. And Wukong's like, ooh, look at Mr. Big Shot over here telling <laughs> me who I can and can't kill, and storms off in a huff, which, if you'll recall his not inconsiderable mobility, means the Monkey King is over the horizon before poor Tripitaka can get a retort. Yeah, so Tripitaka heads off goes. on his own yeah, for a bit, he runs into a mysterious old woman holding a fancy shirt and cap. So the old lady's like, hey, what's the matter, kid? You look like our super-powered disciple just totally ditched you or something. And Tripitaka's like, you got it in one, mysterious old woman. <sighs> If only I had some way to discipline him, maybe the story could actually progress. And the old woman's <laughs> like, funny you should say that. May I recommend that you give him these fancy duds, and then recite this spell? I have this weird feeling that'll stop causing so much trouble if you do. And Tripitaka's what is that? like, seems legit. And then the old lady turns into a beam of light and vanishes oh, because sorry. she was really Quan Yin. So thus far, Tripitaka's too for old again. people secretly being gods. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wukong is off having a nice little tea party with the dragon emperor, who suggests that he go back to Tripitaka rather than abandoning enlightenment and true immortality I over guess. a single argument. Wukong zips back westward, blowing past Quan Yin in the process, who flown over in order Party to consider that very course of action. So Wukong warps back to Tripitaka, who offers him the clothes. Wukong, always a sucker for a new wardrobe, throws them on, finding that they fit him perfectly. Oh, that's the crown? Oh, they... Oh, so Tripitaka... I, I, I forgot his name later. He gave him the crown... He gave someone Wukong the crown and the cape. Okay. Okay. Because that... I, I remember that crown from, um... Out of high school. I'm... Because he had that on too. He's so. rather less thrilled to discover that the hat is cursed, and when Tripitaka mm. recites the spell Kuan Yin taught him, it shrinks and gives him a splitting headache. Of course, ah, he got a high school. Oh, oh, oh I'm seeing. The... Hold on, I'm making connections. I'm sorry, I was making connections. That's like Goku didn't have this whole crown incident thing. He didn't have to worry about headaches. 
the God of High School has something like that in the webtoon slash anime. That is cursed, and when Tripitaka recites the spell Kuan Yin taught him, it shrinks and gives him a splitting headache. Of course, it wouldn't be much of a cursed artifact if he could take it off, so it's also spot welded to his head. After mm. a few very entertaining minutes of Wukong trying furiously to escape the hat by any means necessary, he eventually resigns himself to the fact that he won't be able to get up to his usual hijinks anymore. So the dynamic duo continue onwards with the balance of power now tilted slightly more evenly, and it doesn't take long before they arrive at a nice calm stream that happens to be home to an enormous oh. dragon. Ah! Wukong nopes the hell out of there with Tripitaka in tow, and the dragon <laughs> takes the opportunity to eat Tripitaka's horse. So Tripitaka oh, no. freaks out since without a ride he's stranded, but he's also too scared I to let Wukong, Wukong leave him alone. But a bit of timely divine intervention arrives since without a ride he's stranded, but he's also so too scared to let Wukong leave him alone. But a bit of timely divine intervention arrives to protect Tripitaka, leaving Monkey free to confront the dragon. So they fight okay. it out for a bit, but the dragon's like, screw it, and dives to the river bottom and refuses <laughs> to come out. Wukong does some magic shenanigans and draws the dragon out again, only for the dragon to turn into a water snake and run away. At this point, Wukong Coward. is done, but the local mountain spirit tell him that this dragon is actually under orders by Quan Yin to help them. So one of the heavenly spirits goes and gets her, and after a brief digression where Wukong vents at her about the cursed hat thing, she draws out the <laughs> dragon, and Wukong picks a fight with him, too. Look, he's had a trying day, all right? Anyway, no, Quan Yin gets the dragon to turn into a horse for Tripitaka to replace the one he ate, and then to make Wukong yeah, stop yeah, soaking, yeah. she gives him three get-out-of-danger-free magical leaves. So now, oh. with the matter having been... That totally makes up for the loss of my freedom. <laughs> yeah, it's totally... Yeah, because the previous horse was supposed to help the pilgrim talk to him. But, you know, this new dragon ate it. And resolve to everyone's satisfaction, our dynamic yeah, okay. trio continue westward. So anyway, they continue on and arrive at still yet another monastery, run by a sketchy old monk. Long story <laughs> short, the monk lays eyes on that really fancy monk robe Tripitaka got way back when. It's called a cassock, by the way. And takes it oh, into his head to steal it. And to that end, he decides the best way to go about it is to burn down his own monastery. Sure, like you do. So Wukong smells the smoke, weighs his options, and decides the best way to solve the situation without pissing off Tripitaka is to let Tripitaka. the monks burn their monastery to the ground. But first, he borrows a fireproof cloak from one of his heavenly buddies to make sure Tripitaka and the horse don't burn with it. Is it just <laughs> me, or is Monkey on shockingly good terms with all the people he beat the hell out of in the last he video. Is. The this fire is crazy. He's like, they don't want no smoke with him. Out, and Tripitaka finally wakes up, only for them to find out that during all the confusion, a mountain demon came by and stole the cassock. Also, the patriarch monk killed himself. So anyway, Wukong mm. zips on over to the demon's mountain and they fight, but the demon calls a lunch break and locks himself in his mountain. So Wukong zips back to the ruined monastery for snacks, then returns to the mountain to sneak in. So Wukong disguises himself as the old monk and has a little tea party with the mountain demon, and then they fight more. Wukong <laughs> runs away again, and Wukong decides Son to call in the cavalry. He goes to Kuan Yin, but together they figure out another way to sneak in and get the cassock back. Quan Yin disguises herself as a Taoist friend of the demons, and Monkey King disguises himself as a present from that friend, a pill of immortality. Sure. Long story short, oh. Wukong beats up the demon from the inside. Oh god. Quan Yin retrieves the cassock, and Wukong returns with Tripitaka, and they continue on their merry way. Will Sun Wukong learn the to fact that he can just casually just talk with a guy like, hey. Will Tripitaka succeed in his quest to the Thunderclap Monastery? Will that stupid horse ever <laughs> remember he can fly? Find out <laughs> yeah. next time on Journey to the West. Yeah, like I was trying to stare to the man. Like I was trying to say, it, it's it's like whenever they get into trouble, Wukong's like, you know, let me go hit up that that girl that I forgot her name to help us with our with our problems, and it always works out in the end. Yeah, so triple kata. I'm about to look at his name right now. I had to, I had to run the video back, so I haven't got her name yet. But so she, the god right now, the goddess right now, she went to the land of East to find somebody who can go. Take a journey to the amazing. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, why? For some reason, Buddha can't deliver them himself, so they need to find someone in the land of the east who can make the journey to the western heaven to pick up the scriptures and then return with them. Okay, yeah, okay, I get it now. All right, so the the gods who name we will get to travel to the land of the east while setting some stuff to make sure that it'll be easier travel for this monk, this this pilgrim, make it easier for him to get to the amazing scriptures. Went to the land of the east. Found the monk that whose name is I will get in a second, and then now that monk has is going towards the west to get the scriptures that he needs to take back to the east. Okay, I get it now. I get Our it. Our friend the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin volunteers to find such a. Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin's her name. All right. Now Xuan Zhang has one of the most complicated. Xuan Zhang is the guy. Xuan Zhang's the guy. We um the Buddha, not Buddha, the pilgrim. He is Buddha, but the pilgrim. He's the grandson of an emperor. He's been raised as a monk. Has to present a memorial to the Tang Emperor. Kuan Yin takes the opportunity to steal the show by revealing herself in all her glory to the court, and officially requests a volunteer from the audience to go on the pilgrimage to go to the Western Heaven and retrieve the Tripitaka. Oh, it's to retrieve the Tripitaka. That's not his name. I thought this entire time that was his name. It's to retrieve. It's they're going to journey to the West to retrieve the Tripitaka, which is the thing that Buddha created. Yeah, uh, scriptures that he wants delivered to the east, but swings on. Xuanzang has to bring the on is the, is the pilgrim. Kuan okay. Takes the opportunity to steal the show. Okay, got it. Got it. Volunteers, just as planned, and Xuanzang is given the by name Tripitaka and sent. Oh, but no, he's given the by name Tripitaka. Though. Okay, that's why the name. Okay, I'm like. I'm like his. I don't think his name was Tripitaka. That's why he's like given the by name. Okay. But if you do, and Tripitaka's like seems legit. Then the old lady turns into a beam of light and vanishes yeah. because she was. Yeah. Really Kuan gave. 
Huayan Gain Swinza Chibataka, the items that are like curse items for control. So that's why the dragon takes the Yeah, they caught a dragon. The dragon ate the this horse dragon. New dragon. Yep, yep. Only for them to find out. And they and they devise a whole plan to get back the items that uh that monk stole. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it off. We got it off. Sorry about that. I was definitely confused a little bit when I was watching this video because I kind of forgot the names and certain items. But I had to run that back. We're good now. I understand what happened. I understand what happened in this part too. Interesting. We got a new main ca main character. Is this the main character? Like the actual main character of the, of the uh, story? I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. But Summer Kong is free and he is actually has been controlled because he will get a headache now if he like doesn't listen to Chupataka Swan saying. I already messed up his name. Man, it's hard. Yeah, him, Wukong, and the horse, the new horse dragon, are now going on their adventure again to the, uh, to get the Triple Taka from Buddha. Let's see what happens. There's probably some more, uh, hijinks about to happen before they get there, but I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this series. But we're gonna end it right here, so hopefully you enjoy my reaction, and thank you for watching. My cup of tea's out of here. Um, hasta luego. And I had, I knew for a fact that the moment Sun Wukong gets free, he was going to do some shenanigans. Thankfully, Quan Chang, I think I, I think I messed her name up, saw this coming and like, here you go, Triple Talk. I hear some cursed items to like control uh, Wukong because he, he cannot be trusted. Good idea. Because he was about to be doing some, just, I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be doing some crazy stuff. <laughs>